Hello everyone, thank you for visiting my channel and this episode of an art journal entry that I am creating. This is going to be some mixed media, but here I am just getting my page ready. This is one of Dina Wakely's art journals that has different types of substrate in it. And I chose to use the thick watercolor paper page. These are just some of the tools that I created and um, napkins that I was choosing from to put in this page. And I've also was using some watercolors and I used uh, later on a mixture of some acrylic paints as well. Those are Karataki watercolors, Kurataki, and also some of my brushes. The, I've got my watercolor brushes. They are actually squirrel hair and work extremely well with watercolors. Those are my favorite all-time brushes for watercolor anyway. I initially started off um, using the napkin that you see here, but I could not get that back sheet off. So I skipped it and went on to this one because it was so much easier to tear apart. <laughs> but basically I'm using this napkin as, you know, just something to fill the background. Um, I tend to work a lot of layers. And so I like a busier background to start with. And so that's what this napkin was for. I just lay it down with some Mod Podge. finishing up putting down my napkin I usually put one final layer of Mod Podge over the entire surface oh and the parts that I tore off initially I'm just placing on my page because I didn't want to waste it didn't want to throw it away so I'm just adding it in it's definitely not going to hurt anything adds to the chaos on the page. If you're wondering what substrate that is right next to this, it's actually burlap. Um, she has several different types of material in that art journal. She's got a page of denim, a watercolor page, and she has burlap. It's actually pretty cool. I'm just using my squeegee here. I call it a squeegee. It has another name and I apologize I don't remember, but I just want to smooth everything out and make sure there's no wrinkles, which wrinkles are not. So I've gathered, or excuse me, I, uh, this is watercolor. I just was using one of the mustard yellow colors just to kind of start pushing back that background just a little bit. Um, that's typically what I do is I will use uh, acrylics, watercolors, whatever, gouache, any type of color just to kind of push back the background, especially if it's really busy or if there's a lot of harsh lines from different media that have been put down. Plus it gives it more color, little, little pops of color here and there. And my thinking at the time that I was doing this was I was trying to use complementary colors um, in an area, you know, like in, in green areas, I was trying to use more of the reds. Um, in the yellow areas or orange areas, I was trying to use the complementary color of those so it's it's you know it works sometimes <laughs> but anyway that was the method to the madness at the time so um there was probably a little bit more green down in that corner so I went in with some red I water them down pretty pretty bad or pretty I mean a lot because I, I don't like real harsh 
a blob of color. I still like to see that background in the back, but just not as much. It's just kind of muted. Again, those are my squirrel tail watercolor brushes. I absolutely love them. They're so easy to clean. And they can just, uh, I just love them. They just grab the perfect amount of water. Easy to move around this page. So I wish I could tell you where I got them, um, but you can Google it and probably point you to the right uh, one. Squirrel hair is squirrel hair. Guys, I just have to tell y'all, you know, pages don't always start out pretty. Sometimes they don't even end up pretty. But this was a process for me that I just thoroughly enjoy. I love going from start to finish, and I'm not always super excited about what I ended up with. But it's about the journey for me. You know, I think about so many different things while I'm art journaling, and it just is very therapeutic for me. Um, I took some cardboard and took off, you know, a layer of the cardboard so that it would reveal those corrugation, corrug corrugations. Um, and I've just been using those as mark making tools. They work great. And I've cut some shapes out of a couple of them, some heart shapes, and um, I love those to make marks. You can see the little black lines that it created for me. Super cheap. Everybody's got boxes laying around with the Amazon the way it is. Everybody's ordering on Amazon. But I know I do. I want to take a second to tell, if you're watching this, thank you so much. I am just starting my YouTube channel, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I'm just gonna get better and better. Let me add right here, I've been using I was using the Stabilo Woodies. Uh, crayons just to add some more mark making. But back to that, please like and subscribe. You know, I promise the content will get better. Um, just give me time. I'm, I'm learning. But I thank you. It would just help me so much if you would like and subscribe. My goal is to produce like one video a day to start. thick body paint. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mixed that with some white, and I think I was just really trying to push back that background a little bit more and to mute it a little bit more because it is very busy. But we'll see how it, how it turns out. You know, I just keep trying throughout the process and throughout this entire uh, page. You know, you just trial and error. Some things I really liked, some things I didn't. I tried to cut out as much of this drying time as possible, but it looks like I did miss a few places. <laughs> oh, this stencil. I really like this stencil. Um, I try to use um, a stencil in my art journal pages. Uh, sometimes I will stencil them with regular uh, stamps or ink. Um, but this time I used the texture paste. It's the fluffy texture paste by the Crafters Workshop. You can get it there. Um, I love that stuff. I, I, I just love it. It's so easy to use. But you can also get it at the hardware store. It's just a spackle. You know, uh, I think it's, uh, I, I can't remember, but you can buy a really creamy, puffy paste at the hardware store. They use it for like joint compound. So I just emptied off what was left over there onto that second page just so I didn't waste anything. There it is. I don't know. I, I like 
having some words on my pages. And that right there was just a little sprinkle of glitter. That's a little glitter blower pump thing. It works great because it just, it just spews out the real fine glitter. I don't know that any of it really actually showed up at the end, but um, just using my fingers to spread out some more of that pink, golden uh, thick body paint I had left over on my board. Just taking the rest of it and spreading it over that burlap so that I can use it on that page. Nothing ever goes to waste with me. Little baby wipes. <laughs> Thank God for baby wipes. And I got a new microphone. I hope that my audio sounds okay. If you could leave me a comment letting me know if my audio sounds okay, I would appreciate it. I've got a new microphone set. It wasn't very expensive. I just know when I watch people's videos, I just so appreciate good audio. All right, my paint is dry, I think. I don't think it ever really fully got dry, but dry enough. I would also like to know, do y'all like to listen to music when you watch videos or had you rather have it silent? I know when I watch them, I like a listening, but I don't like anything too crazy. I would be interested to know what your thoughts are, if you could leave a comment. I found this um, Tim Holtz tissue paper. It's, you buy it in a small roll. I really like this stuff. I just put several pieces down because it had some bugs on it, and you know, my background was birds, and I thought, well, you know, I'll just add this in just for some, uh, Again, to push back the background, but it also had those little bugs on it. And I thought it was pretty, pretty cute. The bugs are pretty. But anyway, there again, I'm just trying everything and anything. I just pull what's there and just use it. Sorry if it doesn't look so good right now. It just, I don't know. I like it, but some people don't like busy. I tend to like busy. And I really like bright colors, which you're going to see here soon. I start to bring in some brightness. I really thought I edited out most of that drying, so I'm worried about that. It's just some black Nova paint. They're a company out of California. Really good acrylic paints. Just some mark making here. I'm just using a paintbrush and laying, laying down some marks just for added interest. There's where I start bringing in, I love fluorescent pink. To me, that just goes with everything. <laughs> so I just added some fluorescent pink to my page just to make the colors pop a little bit better. There is some basics paint, I believe. I love that mustard yellow. I use it a lot. Just trying to start leveling down on some colors where you don't see like a hundred different colors. It's, it's gonna kind of focus down to a few. Used a little water to get some drips. Flare again, I don't like blobs of paint. I like it to be fairly transparent or translucent. Now this next color that I end up putting on, it's, it's like brown. You know, I'm not, I didn't like that color. After I put it on, I was like, oh, I don't really like that. But in the end, it, it worked out fine, but just kind of know that it wasn't my favorite either. See, it's just, it's just a bit much. I 
like browns and sienna and I like the mustards. I love those earthy tones, but it just didn't work with this page very good. So lesson learned, won't be using that color combination anymore. And I should have known better, but I didn't. many of you that do art journaling and art card making or anything like that have ever thought about starting your own YouTube channel and just don't know how because it's really not as hard as I thought it would be. The technical part of it anyway. Okay, there's my little palettes. But I just thought, man, this thing is this thing needs some white. So part of my mark making is little circles. I use a um, a brush with a really long uh, it's really long the paint the brush part of it. I don't know what you call it, um, but it keeps you from making perfect circles. It didn't make any sense. I like for everything to look imperfect. Oh, they call it a rigger, a rigger brush. It's a great tool to have. I think it's just like an inch long brush. The hair part of it, I don't even know what that's called, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm taking the rest of that white paint that's on the palette and putting it on another page. There again, not wasting it. some uh, really beautiful purple, mixing it in with, with what is left of that white paint, and I use it to paint the inside of those circles. It just looks really nice and pops when you do that. I love it. I don't think I ever put a circle down, but I don't rub some paint in the middle of it. A few more circles there. Here and there, just trying to Make the background semi cohesive, <laughs> if, if that's even possible with this page. But oh my gosh, it's so hard to talk about. <laughs> There's another one of my um, stamps that's just script writing. I love that stamp, it's so well used. Just scatter those along the page. Just more added interest. That one is just a little bit. Blue. It came out really blobby. It came out really blobby, so I just wiped as much of it as I could off and called the rest art. <laughs> Clean it off my stamp really, really good because they can take up really fast. Tips and was doing some mark making with that mustard yellow by Basics paint, um, and it really it, it it brought it more together. I really liked that touch.
almost to the end. Um, I will tell you that this last part, I never added any type of embellishments to my art journal pages, like sequins or anything, but I did on this one. I'm not real sure why. Um, as if it weren't gaudy enough, I just needed to add that. But it didn't look bad. You just can't really see it on the video, but it added something to it, I guess. So here it is, just me picking out which ones I want. In the end, I think I ended up going with uh, violet, a yellow color, gold, whatever you want to call it, and just kind of sprinkle maybe 10 or 11 sequins throughout the page. They're flat back gems, actually. Simon Says Stamps has, I believe that glue gun is so awesome. You, can, it's, you use it with the Nubo glue, and it's so easy to dispense glue with that thing. I ended up switching because I think I'm running out. Oak holes, you know, the glue dries and you can't get any out, so we end up having to reopen the hole. But I put little purple gems all throughout the little white circles just to kind of give it a little sparkle. And that's my dual picker. You can get those um, on Simon Says Stamp. I have so many jewels and sequins and oh my gosh, that's... I probably started using them that for that reason. Like, okay, I've got to use some of these because I'm going to die with them. The plenty of supply left. <laughs> Children are gonna love me. <laughs> so as this finishes, I just again want to thank you all for watching my video. And I promise as my content keeps coming that it will improve. Um, I've got lots of neat ideas coming up. I'm going to do some more jelly printing um, techniques and some, some more um, journal tags. I love doing tags. So there's a lot of things I'm going to be, uh, videos I'm going to be doing here soon. But if you don't mind liking and subscribing, um, I would appreciate it very, very much. I thank you all for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'm happy to answer anything and everything. Have a wonderful day. Bye.